Hey everyone and welcome back to Joey's Retro Newscast where I go over the top news of the last week in retro handheld and retro gaming and just share with you what happened. This week was the darkest timeline with both Yuzu and Citra being shut down and we're going to talk about that in depth a little bit later on. But let's get into some of the other news that happened this week. The Ambernic RG35XX Plus and H now have Portmaster support through MUOS. MUOS is a custom firmware that's been available for both of these systems, as well as the RG35XX way back when, and it's based off of RetroArch. So if you're at all familiar with RetroArch and maybe you like RetroArch, then it might be a good custom firmware for you to check out. And I'm actually working on a video right now to showcase it a little bit more so a lot more people get interested in it because I find it to be a really good option for both of those devices. Now the selection of games for Portmaster on the 35XX Plus and H through MUOS is a little bit limited right now just due to some developmental reasons. But if you're interested in Portmaster and you want to look at some Portmaster games then why not check it out. It's a new week, so there's new emulation station news, and this time for Android. One of the biggest changes that they've made here is that it no longer shows the setup wizard when you have it set as a home launcher on your Odin 2 and other devices, where before it used to show up as it was never launched before and it wanted you to set it up every single time. That's all fixed, thankfully, and there's some other bug fixes and changes here as well. One thing to note is that the desktop edition is going to be removing Yuzu support at some point in the future. I assume it's going to be Citra as well. It doesn't say on the change log, but I'm going to assume it's going to be both of them. So just keep an eye out on future releases. They're probably going to be removing them, but there is a way through Google to add them back in if you'd like. Then we have some big news for Nintendo DS emulation, and the developer of the popular DS emulator, Drastic, has made it free on the Play Store, and they're also going to be releasing their sources pretty soon. We've known that they were going to release sources for a long while now, it was something that a lot of people were waiting on, so it's awesome to see that we're finally there, and this is going to help DS emulation for everybody, and hopefully we get some good things coming out of it at some point in the future. Personally, I've gravitated towards Melon DS standalone on Android just because of the retro achievement support and now it's going to have upscaling. But with this going open source, it might actually help Melon DS because there are a few games that just don't launch on Melon DS but do work on Drastic and vice versa. So just keep an eye out. Then we have some news that RPCS3 now has menu support for controllers. And this is a big one. And RPCS3 is a PS3 emulator for x86 devices. But before you weren't able to access or control the actual menu of it with a controller. So you'd always have to go and find a mouse and keyboard or just fiddle around with it. But for things like the Steam Deck and other handhelds that are now popping up, you want to be able to just make changes to settings and all of that through just the controller. And that's where this comes in. So it's awesome to see and I'm really hoping that a lot more emulators do this because we're getting a lot more handhelds that can do these sorts of emulators and we do need that support. Let's jump into device news now and this is probably my favorite news of the week. There's a user on Reddit that is developing or developed a way for you to match the LEDs on your Odin 2 to the colors that are on screen. So for a lot of people, you might be familiar with this type of technology for TVs. A lot of people have backlights behind the TV and they sync to the content that's on screen and the colors change with it. This user has replicated that on the Odin 2 and this is fantastic to see. I can't wait for this. Watch the video, check it out, check out the user. I don't know what the timeline is for this. It was just kind of one post and then off he went into the sunset. So I'm hoping this comes out pretty soon because this is awesome and I can't wait to see this. Then we have a GKD Pixel update and this is a custom firmware so it's not stock or made by the developers of GKD but somebody went ahead and added a few front ends, a bunch of cores and just made a lot of improvements to the GKD Pixel software and they called it just version 2 of stock OS. I'll leave a link for you to check it out if you have a GKD Pixel. 
I just got one in and I've been reviewing it and checking it out and I got a lot of things to say about it and we'll talk about that in the review. But for those of you that have one and maybe you're waiting for something better to pop along for a custom firmware, this might be worth checking out because it combines MinUI and a few other things into just one package and it makes it a lot easier for you. Then we have some Retroid news and they're developing a dock and they say it's for the 4 Pro but I'm going to guess it's for the base and Pro as well and probably some other devices and it should be coming out July or August of this year. They stated that they just started developing it a few weeks ago and it'll be out in a few months. Personally, I don't know if I actually need a dock from Retroid. There are just so many dock options out there in the world that just another one isn't needed, especially because it's probably going to have a markup and shipping costs and all that. And I can just go to Amazon and pick up a cheap one and it works. But if for whatever reason you've been waiting for an official Retroid dock and that's the one you want, then keep an eye out. I'm guessing with delays and all of that, you probably see this in September. But July, August, September, at some point, we're going to see one. If this weekly report helps you, don't forget to like and sub. It helps the channel grow. Some game news now, and Ghost of Tsushima is coming to PC, and it's the director's cut on May 16th. From what they say here, they have fully optimized 21x9 and 32x9 resolutions, and even support 48x9 resolutions. So they've kind of gone above and beyond for just some weird widescreen resolutions. But they're also supporting DLSS 3, FSR 3, and even Intel's XESS. And if that wasn't enough, they're also supporting the DualSense, so the PS5 controller, the adaptive triggers on it. I want to see more games do this because the PS5 controller's adaptive triggers are pretty awesome and I love using them in a lot of different games. Not really much in shooters where I'm just hoping to just push down the button, but for other games like single player games where I'm just invested in the story, it does help with a little bit of immersion. So seeing this come to PC and a lot more games using it is pretty awesome. In more Sony news, we got confirmation that the Final Fantasy Remake and Rebirth games are going to be Sony exclusives for consoles. So neither of those two games are going to be going to Xbox or Switch. It'll still be coming to PC, and there isn't any news on the third game, but you have to imagine that if the first two are console exclusive to Sony, then the third one will be too, and the entire trilogy will be. But we'll have to see what ends up happening when the entire trilogy is done. It could end up being a scenario where they just, after that, maybe wait a year or two and then say, hey, Xbox and Switch, you can have this. I don't know how well it would run on a Switch, probably the Switch 2 if it has a lot more power, but the Xbox certainly can. So for Xbox and Switch users, sorry on this information. It seems like Final Fantasy Remake and Rebirth are just going to be Sony only. And that's a shame because I just finished Rebirth and it is a fantastic game. I had a lot of fun with it. It is, in my mind, probably one of the best that I've played because it is just a great story, great visuals, great audio. It is everything in one package. And I had a lot of fun with it. So if you have a PS5, I definitely recommend checking out the series if you haven't already. Lastly on game news, we have the Xbox Partner event. And we got some new information on a few different games. There's a few small ones and then there's the big ones, so let's just talk about the big ones. The biggest here is that Final Fantasy XIV is going to be coming on March 21st. And you have access to the Starter Edition, I think a little bit earlier, on Game Pass. So you have that option as well. Then the second biggest one is that Persona 3 Reload has an expansion pass that was announced. And this one is a little bit tough to swallow. The game just came out, and if you check the trailer, it looks like a lot of the content is finished for this expansion pass. So it seems like a scenario where they actually held back content to make this expansion pass. And that just doesn't sit right with me. It usually doesn't. I don't know what the actual scenario is, but I know that they're looking to get more money, of course. And so they held it back, it seems, and they're going to be releasing that. But for a remake of an older game, it should have just been in one package. It's kind of gross to do this, and I'm not a big fan of it. So just keep in mind that the expansion pass is coming out, and you can check the details on the Xbox website. All right, let's talk about the big news. And obviously, this is the Citra and Yuzu shutdown drama, all of it. We'll talk about all of it. Now, 
fair warning, obviously, I am not a lawyer in any way, shape, or form. So a lot of this is just my interpretation and just kind of what I'm thinking when I'm reading a lot of what's coming out. And we'll talk about the actual timeline of how we got here. So first up, on February 27th, we found out that Yuzu was being sued by Nintendo for just different reasons. And the biggest one is they stated Yuzu was responsible for damages to Nintendo by illegally circumventing Nintendo's software encryption, and they were seeking damages because Yuzu also profited through it via Patreon. Now, Patreon wasn't the only way that Yuzu was getting money. There was the early access version on the Google Play Store, which a lot of us were sort of conned into purchasing at the beginning when we found out afterwards that the GitHub was a lot more up to date and had nightly builds and it was free. So it ended up being a scenario where you were just kind of providing money to support the developers, but that ended up kind of pushing it over the edge for Nintendo because they had Patreon, they had the Google Play Store, and they had all this income coming and according to Nintendo, and we find out later that they win this, that this was all illegal to them. They were making money off of Nintendo's just IP and Yuzu was doing it illegally according to them. And so then on March 1st, we found out that Yuzu hired a lawyer to what we thought combat this. And I think a lot of us figured that they were fighting it, myself included. End up being the scenario where that wasn't the case, but just by getting the lawyer and responding, we figured that they were going to fight this and all of that, but not knowing really what was happening behind the scenes. And then we find out on March 4th, so a few days later, that Yuzu decided to settle with Nintendo at a tune of $2.4 million, along with the shutdown of Yuzu and Citra, of the GitHub sites, all of the sites, and basically all of the tools and information that they had. They gave Nintendo the keys to the kingdom of everything they had and shut down completely. That means that right now, if you try and find them, they're all shut down from the official sites or what used to be official sites, but the internet remembers, and you can find them in different places. Now, for user to have shut down or to accept this, it must have been clear that they were going to lose this battle if they went to trial or to court. So they decided to just settle at a $2.4 million valuation and shut down everything completely. And if you go ahead and read the documents, and I'm going to leave a link to it in the sources, there's a lot of information there and a lot of things that Nintendo was going after and a lot of actual evidence that Nintendo had, where if it went to trial, I think it would have been a scenario where they would have lost. And I mean Yuzu and Citra, of course, not actual Nintendo. Nintendo would have won this one if they went to trial, in my personal opinion. But either way, what happened happened, so Yuzu, Citra are gone. I think the bigger loss here is Citra. 3DS emulation from other sources isn't there yet, so Citra was kind of our one and only. There is Ryujinx for Yuzu and other options that are available, but 3DS is the big one. So current state right now, Yuzu and Citra are gone. A lot of content creators like myself can't share where you can get the APKs or previous versions or anything like that. Google obviously has all that information, but it's not something that I'll be sharing in any of my guides, and I've removed it from my website and my video guide, so you can't find them there either. But let me share with you what my future plans are, and for me, nothing's going to change. I am still going to show benchmarking for Nintendo Switch games on both PC and Android, and PC I'll be using Ryujinx probably, but on Android, I'm still going to be using Yuzu and Citra just won't be able to share the actual builds, but you'll know what they are. So for anybody looking for benchmarking, it's still how I'm going to be doing it. As for what happens next, for a lot of you that are wondering, those APKs and those programs are still going to work. There isn't anything that's stopping them from working, and all of that's still going to be fine. The problem becomes, as new games come out, at least on the Switch side, there might be a scenario where it breaks something, and at some point a new game isn't going to run or it's not going to work, and at that point it's going to be the scenario where it's just not going to work. But older games and games that are running as of today should still run in the future, and we might be able to brute force some things with more power as more chips come out, but kind of current state is where we're going to see Yuzu and Citra emulation for a little bit now, until somebody else comes out with a better version on at least Android. But for PC, we do have better options, and that should be fine. 
Now some controversial Joey thoughts. I personally didn't really emulate Switch as much as my videos suggested. It was more of a scenario where I was doing tutorial videos and showcases for other people that wanted it. And if you remember in pretty much every video I ever do, I always say that if you wanted to do Switch, just buy a Switch. That was my kind of methodology and my thoughts all the time. And that goes for me personally. And obviously knowing that a lot of people just don't have the money to buy all of these different devices. But we were kind of playing with fire this entire time by doing Switch emulation at the current generation being Switch. This is the first real time in the history of emulation that we've had this sort of scenario happen. And especially when you're charging money as a Patreon or as a Google Play Store, to continue doing that development of emulation, it was going to always end up in some sort of scenario like this. Nintendo was never going to let this go. I'm not sure what actually pushed them over the edge here. I think Nintendo was actually waiting for some sort of slip up to catch them. And then they just continued with the evidence and the evidence and the evidence until they decided that they had enough and this was the time to go after them. Now, it's not going to stop other options. And that's what we're going to talk about next is what happens next. What happens going from here with the source code being available and anybody and everybody being able to make their own Yuzu emulator. Well, first, my advice is to completely ignore anything and everything that you see for the next few weeks, at least months. At some point, someone is going to come out and you'll know because content creators like myself and everybody else will kind of gravitate towards that specific one. But as of right now, the only thing that's really happening is a lot of people are forking the existing Yuzu and Citra developments, changing some of the language and some of the names to their own names and then creating a new github and saying that this is the new one and we saw that with Nuzu, which was made by a 15 year old and it was already shut down so to avoid hassle on your end to avoid any instances of possible viruses and malware to avoid any just wasting of your time just wait a little bit longer continue using what you have and what you've been using and wait for somebody to pop out that is an actual respected name and has the backing and all of that because anybody can go ahead right now and make a github and say it's a new yuzu emulator but not everybody can actually develop it and continue supporting it and set up a team to continue doing so. So wait for all of that to happen and you'll know, trust me, it'll be the big news when it does and hopefully that one doesn't get shut down. Let me and us be the guinea pigs and you just sit back and play your games and just wait for something to happen. Hey everyone, there is one last piece of news that just came out literally after I was done filming and I started editing and all of that and it's the Jellos news. And so this is big enough that I wanted to throw it into this video, even though it might be jarring because I'm filming this a little bit later. Some things might look off and sound off, but either way, want to talk about it. So let's get into it and I'm going to share on screen as well what the big notice is, but I'll go through it. So basically the Jellos team is kind of scared of what's happening with Nintendo and what happened this week. And because Yuzu was a supported emulator for them, they're taking down, and they already did take down, all of their images off of their GitHub. So right now, if you own any device that has a Jellos build, so x55 people, you're in trouble right now, you aren't able to reinstall or grab that image from the Jellos GitHub. You could find it, of course, because the internet always remembers, but they took it down from the official site right now, and they're going to stop supporting RK3566 devices, so RGB30, X55, the upcoming RGB20SX, and so much more, and they're only going to continue supporting the RK3326 devices and a few others, like the 3588. Also, they're going to stop working with PowKitty, so they're no longer going to be the operating system of choice when it comes to PowKitty device releases. And we'll have to see what PowKitty actually does on this. And this is one of the things that I talked about in my previous video if you watched it. What happens next for PowKitty in this scenario? Some other notices here, they're going to release updates less frequently and less often. 
For devices that were previously supported and are no longer supported, there's going to be no more updates. Unless somebody forks this project and starts taking it over, just assume that your updates and any future updates are going to be dead on that device for now. And so that means a lot of what PowKitty has out there for the most part, because a lot of the other devices like Ambernic had ArcOS or another option. But things like the X55 are going to be in a bit of trouble. It's not like your device won't stop working, just won't get any future updates. There's some other news and you can read the whole post, but that's kind of the gist of it is they're basically going into hiding a little bit and stopping support of a few different devices and chips and the most popular options that they had. And they're focusing on newer chips like the RK3588, which is only available right now in the GameForce Ace. It's a weird decision because that is just a disaster of a handheld, but it's their choice to make and they're kind of just backing out. For me, personally, nothing changes. I, if you could tell from all of my videos, I never once really proposed or advocated for jellos. It's not my operating system of choice and there's other reasons that I won't get into that it's just not for me. So I don't really have to do anything on my end and for users that are affected by this, I think just wait. We might see somebody fork this and continue updates. Obviously your device is still going to work, no issues there. If you need the old builds, you can try something like the Wayback Machine or just check around on the Discord, which you'll have in my description, just to see if you can get it from the Retro Handhelds Discord. I'm sure somebody has some of them backed up somewhere. And it might just take some time just to see how it all shakes out. By the way, did I miss a topic that you want to talk about? The top comment with the words newscast topic will be featured next week on next week's show. That's all from me, London.